two magma chambers have been spotted beneath Yellowstone National Park. Beneath the bubbling geysers and hot springs of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming lies a volcanic hotspot that has fueled some of the largest eruptions on Earth. Geologists have now fully imaged the underground plumbing system and have discovered not one, but two magma chambers beneath the giant volcano. The big new thing is that we've uncovered a deeper, larger magma reservoir in the lower crust, said study author Xin Hua Huang, a seismologist at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Scientists have known about the plume that carries molten rock from deep in the mantle to a region about 60 kilometers, 37 miles, below the surface. They've also imaged a shallow magma chamber about 10 kilometers, 6 miles, below the surface, containing about 10,000 cubic kilometers, 3,700 cubic miles, of molten material. But now they've found a deeper magma chamber, 4.5 times larger, that lies between 20 and 50 kilometers, 12 and 31 miles, below the surface. They found the missing link between the mantle plume and the shallow magma chamber, said Peter Cervelli. The discovery itself increased the chances of an eruption, which is driven by the emptying of the shallow chamber. The last major eruption was 640,000 years ago, and the threat of earthquakes is much more likely today. But the deeper chamber means that the shallow chamber can be refilled over and over again. Knowing that you have this extra reservoir tells you that you can have much larger volumes erupting on a relatively short timescale, said co-author Victor Tsai a geophysicist at the California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. The findings, reported online today in Science, also confirm a long-suspected model for some volcanoes, in which a deep chamber of molten basalt, a dense rock rich in iron and magnesium, feeds a shallower chamber filled with a lighter, silicon-rich rock called rhyolite. The researchers used seismometers to measure the noise of earthquakes to create a kind of sonogram of the Earth's crust. When earthquakes pass through molten material, seismic waves slow down. The team interpreted these low-velocity regions as magma chambers, even though these chambers are still mostly solid rock and contain only a small amount of molten melt. Distant earthquakes are useful for imaging deep structures, such as the mantle, and local earthquakes can help see shallow chambers. Wang said his study is the first time the two types of data have been combined so that the middle depths and the deeper chambers can be seen. His team used 11 seismometers from EarthScope US Array to listen for deep quakes and 69 seismometers from several local seismic networks to collect data from shallower quakes. The study is hints a view of the magma system from the top of the eruption all the way down to the crust, says Alan Lavander a geophysicist at Rice University in Houston, Texas. But he says it raises an interesting new question that could be fodder for future research. With the North American tectonic plate moving westward a few centimeters a year over a steady mantle plume, he expected to see the two chambers, which are inside the plate, shift to the west of the eruption. Instead, they shifted to the east of the eruption. But Huang says that with rough dimensions now available for all the major magma bodies, modelers can try to understand how magma moved in past eruptions and why the chambers were where they were. After this study, they can get better numbers for this kind of modeling.